Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a pathfinding algorithm, and this algorithm is called breaths first search algorithm. Now, I don't know if I said that correctly or not, so feel free to uh, correct me in the comments if I'm butchering the name, but essentially what this is, is it's a cue based algorithm that's very simple that allows us to find the shortest possible path from one point to another point in a maze that looks something like this. Now you can use this to do tons of different things. Um, pathfinding is just one of the nice applications and visual applications that we can show you with it. But essentially what it does and what this algorithm can do for us is generate a list of uh, every single possible uh, move or subset of a problem that we can do. And then we can try all of those different things until eventually we reach a result that's favorable or that we want. So in this case, we're gonna generate, for example, in a maze like this, we're gonna generate every single possible valid move that you can make in this move. So every single possible path you could have, we're gonna try that path and we're gonna see that if it goes from uh, the start point to the end point. And the way we're going to determine if it's the shortest path is how I'm going to talk, what I'm going to talk about throughout this video. So let's start with a demonstration and then I want to move into talking about a queue. So we're going to explain that and then we'll talk about the breaths first search algorithm, how that works, and then we'll get into implementing it. So I already have this obviously coded and I'll show you that when I run this program, you can see that uh, it generates the shortest path for this maze. So this is the start point and this is the end point and you can see these plus signs represent actually the only path that leads us to this end node. Okay. Now if I have another maze, so I have maze two, so let's run this and just do a comparison here. Uh, so maze two, change that. And you can see that again, we get the shortest path uh, from there to the end point here. And obviously I can mess around with this end point if I want to show you and prove to you that I did not just actually hard code this. Uh, what I can do is put X here, uh, put a pound sign, where is this like that? And there we go. You can... Did I make a mistake here? Let's run this one more time. Oh, I'm messing up the wrong maze. My bad. Okay. I thought I really made a horrible mistake there. Okay. <laughs> so I was changing the wrong maze. Anyways, we'll change the end coordinate to be here now. We'll run that. And you can see now that it's again, it's finding us the shortest path, which will be this to get to the end node. And I'm going to talk about exactly how this works and how we can kind of implement this. Okay, so let's go to the drawing board now and talk about our first problem or our first kind of thing, which is a queue. So what is a queue? You might have heard of queue before, maybe in pool, maybe in just uh, like a list kind of data structure, but essentially it's just a data structure um, that has a few different properties associated with it. So the queue that we're going to talk about is called FIFO. Now you might have seen this before and you might have been like, whoa, what the heck does this mean? It's actually super straightforward. It stands for first in, first out. And that obviously means that the first element to go into the queue has priority of coming out of the queue first. Um, it's a very basic and standard data structure. If you guys are in computer science or are taking a course you'll probably learn about it at some point hopefully at least uh, in first year university so first in first out okay that's the queue that we're going to be using so to give you a quick demonstration of what i mean by that um, let's create a queue and let's add some elements so this is going to be my queue it's hard to like keep redrawing the queues but anyways you get what i mean so this is going to be my queue data structure and what i want to do is i want to add the elements one four uh, and five to my queue so the first element I'm going to add is going to be one. Okay. So one comes into my queue and it's actually going to start. Let's start it here at the end. Okay. So we can get rid of this line. So we'll put one here. So this is the first element in our queue and we can put a little one above it just to represent that it is the first one. Okay. Now the next element I want to add into my queue is four. So what we're going to do is we're going to push four to the end of the queue. So four will go here. And what that means is I go to my eraser tool here. Our one gets pushed over here to the beginning of the queue. Now, so one is here, four is here. This is the first element added, and this is the second element added. So now at this point in time, if I wanted to remove an element from the queue, which one would be removed? Well, we don't really have a choice. It would be one. And that is because it has the highest priority and it was the first element added to the queue. So if I wanted to remove an element, what I would do is I would remove one. So we can simply erase one like this. Okay. Uh, that would mean four would shift into like the first position in the queue. Okay. So it moves over. And then if we wanted to remove another element from the queue, well, the only element left in the queue is four. So we'd take four and we'd move it out of the queue and we'd remove that. Okay. So let's say now we have four in the queue. One has been removed. We've already added and removed it. We want to add five. Well, we can add five in here like that. Now this is the first element in the queue. This is the second element in the queue. So if we want to remove an element, we remove four. Uh, it comes out like that. And then five would be shift over and be the first element in the queue. 
Um, hope that makes sense. It's pretty straightforward. You guys will understand as we go through some examples. So how can we use this queue to generate um, like a subset of every single possible solution? So let's do a really basic example with binary numbers. So binary, my horrible writing skills. Okay, so binary numbers, you can either have a zero or a one, right? So say we want to generate all the binary numbers up to, uh, let's say, 15. Okay, how can we do that using a queue? Well, what we want to do, I'll just put this in here in brackets 15, is we're going to uh, start by, let's say, set up a queue. So we're going to say Q equals to, and this will just be like a blank queue for right now, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to add two things into the queue. Or we're going to start actually with nothing, and we're going to go through a while loop, or, or a for loop in this case. We're going to say for blank, because it doesn't actually matter what this value is, in range, okay? And we'll do 15, because we want to generate 15 numbers. What we're going to do is we're going to start. So this is actually going to start with just blank in it. Okay, just nothing. We're going to start by dequeuing. And what dequeuing means is it means removing something from the queue. So you might hear this says dequeue means remove from the queue. Then there's something called on queue, which means add to the queue. And on queue adds to the end of the queue. Dequeue removes from the front of the queue, first in, first out, right? Okay, so if we're doing, uh, if we're dequeuing, we're going to say like x, all right, equals q dot get. Now get is just getting um, the like the first element in the queue from us, okay? So x equals q dot get. So x in this case is going to be equal to a blank string. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add two elements into the queue. So we're going to start by adding, we'll say y equals, uh, and we're going to do x plus, and then in this case zero, okay? Because we're doing the binary number zero. And then we're going to do z equals x plus one. So now what we've done is we've what we've removed this blank string from the queue. So our queue now looks like this, okay? And then what we've done is we've added two elements into the queue. So the first element we added was zero because blank plus zero is zero. And then we added one. So now we have zero and we have one, okay? So imagine this, both of these, I don't have enough room, just say add to queue, okay? We're just gonna say that we added those, all right? Okay, so we do that and this is our for loop and this is what we're gonna do to generate the subset. So now let's look at um, the next loop of our for loop. Okay, so our Q is zero one, I'm just going to leave um, this undid so I can or undone or whatever, so I can add things. So now what happens when we get something from the Q? What do we get? We get zero, right? Because well, we zero is the first element. So we're going to grab that. And now we're going to add another thing to the Q. So zero is removed, zero is gone. So let's erase this We'll erase zero. Okay. And now what do we have? X is zero. So that means Y is going to be equal to zero, zero, right? And what is Z? Well, Z is zero, one. Okay. So there we go. Now we have one, zero, 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 one. Okay. So let's do the next thing. Let's try the next one. Okay. So now we're going to queue again. We're going to start. And what is our first element in the queue? That's one. So we're going to remove one from the queue. So let's do one. Okay. Uh, we'll move these brackets over just to save us a bit of room here. Okay, so we have one, so x is equal to one, and then we do what? Y equals x plus zero. So that means now we're gonna get one zero in our queue, and then what's the next thing we're gonna get? We're gonna get x plus one, which stands for one, one. So now you can see we have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one in our queue. And obviously we can keep repeating this process, and if I do it one more time, essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna remove zero, zero, so that gets, we'll get rid of zero, zero, okay? And then the next thing that we're going to add into our queue is zero, zero, zero. So zero, zero, zero. And then we're going to add zero, zero, one. Okay. We're going to add those to the end. Then we're going to grab zero, one. And then we're going to go zero, one, zero. And we're going to go zero, one, one. And we're going to keep on, keep on, keep on generating these until eventually we hit the binary number 15 or until this loop has ran 15 times. Okay. Um, and I hope that makes sense in terms of how to generate that. So let's see how much time we're at. Nine minutes. Okay. That's not bad. So that is how we can generate a subset of every single binary number. So how do we now apply this into pathfinding? Well, it's a very similar um, approach. So in binary numbers, we had two things. We had zero and one. With our path, we have four things. We have up, right, down, left, and right. So what do we do now if we want to add these four things to our queue? Well, it's the exact same process. We're going to start with a queue, and all the queue is going to have in it is a blank string, OK? Nothing. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to loop. So let's just say loop. We'll write some pseudo code here. And all we're going to do is we're going to dequeue the first element. So we're going to say x is equal to q dot get. So we're getting that first element, which is going to be a blank string. And then all we're going to do is instead of just adding two things, we're going to add four things. So we're going to say x 
plus equals or no what am i saying x plus equals we'll say like uh add one so the first thing to add to the queue will be equal to x plus and in this case u and then the next one so add two will be equal to x plus and we'll do d like that and we'll go and we'll do l and we'll do r as well and we'll add those and we'll continue through the process and it will generate every single possible um, like solution to UDLR um, that we could have. And we'll, I'll show you how like we'll print it out and we'll be able to look at all of them in a second. Okay. But that's how we do it for pathfinding. Now, the only thing with pathfinding though, is we could have invalid paths. So let's actually clear this. So for example, if we draw a three by three grid, so if we do something like this, okay. So three by three, quick little grid here and we say like this is an obstacle our start point is here and our end point is here we want to get from the start to the end well the way we do this is again we're going to generate all the possible moves so the first move we would have well the only valid moves we can do is we can go this way we can go left or we can go down right because if we try to go backwards sorry right and we try to go up those are not valid moves so we're not going to add them to the queue and i'll show you how we implement that in python but essentially just only add um, valid moves to the queue so that when we're checking if we've reached this destination or not we're only checking valid moves there's no point in checking moves outside of the range right okay so we have two possible moves so our moves right now in our queue are going to be equal to what left and down okay so now we repeat the process, we'll DQL. So let's DQL and we'll look at, now we're looking at this move, okay? So now L is removed from the queue. So if we go, where is my eraser? And we remove L and let's open up this queue again. Okay, so we removed L. Now we're at L, what's the only valid moves we can do? Well, we can go right or we can go left. Okay, so the two moves we'll add from that are now we're gonna have left, left, or we're gonna have left, right. And those are the two moves now down let's look at what down is okay so now we're down so we'll dq that so we'll say down what are the moves we can possibly do well we can't go right okay we could can't we can go up we cannot go left and we can go down so the two moves we can do are here and here so let's just undo all those arrows quickly um so what we're going to do then obviously is we'll add we'll say one of the moves is down down another move is down up okay now d is removed um, and let's just pretend this keeps going quickly uh, on to over here. I chose the wrong pen object. And then we can just continue repeating this process. And eventually what's going to happen is we're going to get a move that's either equal to, uh, what do you call it? Left, left, down, down, down. Or we're going to get a move that's equal to down, down, left, left, left. Now each of these are only five moves. So either path is perfectly valid to go. And that's how we're going to generate uh, the path to find our point. Now, I hope that makes sense. That's probably like the longest but easiest way I can explain this to you and how that works. Um, but essentially, we're going to generate every single possible path. We're going to check before we add something into the queue if it's a valid path. For example, going here, so going down and going left is not valid, so we won't bother adding it to the queue. Uh, and then what we're going to do is every time we generate a new path, we're going to check if that path reaches the end. And if it does, we can simply stop because we know we found the shortest path. Now, how do we know we found the shortest path? Well, every time we DQ and we add things to the queue, we're adding one step to the path. So if we just found a path, we would have generated every single possible path that takes five steps and we found one that reached the end. We know that we're at the shortest path because we would have found a path earlier if there was a shorter one. And I hope that makes sense in terms of how that works. Okay, so that's enough for the drawing. So let's do a quick uh, talk about this implementation here. All this source code is going to be up on my website, techwithtim.net, if you guys want to use this. Um, sorry, I'm just putting away my drawing tablet here so I can get my keyboard ready to go. But essentially, uh, most of this code is just the cosmetic stuff, like creating the maze, um, printing the maze out, right? <laughs> valid, checking if it's a valid position, uh, finding the ed. So let's just go to the algorithm. And this is the part that I was explaining to you. I'm not going to talk about all these, but essentially we create a queue. Now, Python already has an implementation for a queue. If you simply import queue, then you can use that. And we can put things into the queue by doing dot put. All right, so I start by putting a blank string like I was talking about before, okay? And then I'm just setting this variable add equal to blank and add just is going to represent like the first path that we have. Okay. I'm going to create a maze because the maze is going to be what I want to traverse through and see if I've reached the end or not. And while, while I have not found the end of the maze, so while find end is not true, 
what I'm and I give it maze and I give it add and add is represents the path that we just recently used. Okay. Um, I could probably call that path and it would make more sense, but that's what add represents essentially. While we have not found the end, we're going to continue doing the process that I'm going to talk about here. So we're going to DQ. We're going to get the first element from the queue. In this case, we're going to nums dot get and nums just represents all of the different uh, things in our queue. Okay. Cause I did nums equals Q dot Q. All right. We're going to say four J in left, right, up, down. Now, all this is doing essentially is we're first going to start by creating a new thing to put into the queue. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the last element that we dequeued. We're going to add first of all left to it. Then we're going to add right to it. Then we're going to add up to it. Then we're going to add down to it. That's how the for loop works. And before we actually add it to the queue, we're going to make sure it's a valid path. So we say if this path, so what we've just generated is valid in the given maze, then we'll add it to the queue. Otherwise, just go to the next one. Don't bother adding it because why would I add a path that's not valid? We can't take that path. So there's no point in using it. And we're just going to loop through this until eventually we find the end, in which case this loop will break. And then our path will be equal to um, what do you call it? Whatever path, like whatever the last path in the queue is. So for example, like if you Q had a list, a length of 67, the 67th path would be the one that would lead you to um, the end position. And that's because we stopped at that point. So the last element is obviously going to be the path. So I'll, I'll demonstrate again for you one more time. And you can kind of see, right? Maybe this makes more sense in how this works now. So we started by generating this position because it was the only valid position, right? And then this position generated either right or left. And then it, this one generated left or down and it, right. And it just keeps going and generating every single possible position until eventually we hit here. So like every single possible movement almost was generated here. But once we eventually hit here, we just stopped and we said, this is the path down, left, down, down, right, down, down. And you can see how that works on the maze. Okay. So anyways, that is Brett's first search algorithm explained extremely in depth. If you guys have any questions about that, please don't hesitate to ask me. If you guys want to mess around with this example, make your own mazes, please head to my website, go ahead and download it, use it. Um, it's completely for free. I want you guys to learn and experiment with this. And I think it's pretty cool how this actually works. Uh, and as always, if you guys are new here, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you again in another video.